Hey everybody, it's Jason from Collision Hub. You know, as collision repair professionals, we work with our hands and we need our eyes every day to, to be successful in doing collision repair. Uh, if we're not safe, if we're not practicing safe habits, um, our livelihood is at stake. Uh, with me today is Charlie Ayers from CCAR, and we're gonna talk about health and safety training that's available from CCAR. Uh, welcome to the show, Charlie. Hey Jason, good to see you. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about CCAR, what CCAR is, what they do, uh, talk about some of the benefits of training, not only from a personal protection standpoint, but also some of the laws that are required. And then we've got a special announcement at the end of the show that we want to share with everybody. So, Charlie, why don't you first give us a little bit of information about CCAR, what exactly, uh, what, do you, what do you do? Yeah, CCAR is an acronym, like a lot of acronyms in the industry, yep. Coordinating Committee for Automotive Repair. Uh, we've been around now 25 years. This is our 25th anniversary. Happy anniversary. Thank you. I uh, got started way back with uh, grant funding from the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, and realized early on that that grant funding would not go on forever. So we started getting into online training as a way to generate revenue uh, to sustain ourselves. We're a nonprofit. Uh, started doing online training in the early 2000s, and then that grew from environmental into safety, where we signed our first OSHA alliance, which we've signed many. That branched off into uh, HAZMAT training, a group called NAHAC, another acronym. North American Automotive uh, Hazardous Action Committee approached us to create some hazmat training for the automotive dealers. And so we started doing hazmat training in 2005. Uh, we're based in the Chicagoland area and we're a niche provider. We don't do training to anybody other than those in the automotive industry. And you've got an automotive background too, is that correct? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, a, a reformed technician. I uh, started working <laughs> as a tech back in the early 80s. Uh, first became ASE certified in 1991. I still turn a wrench on the weekends when I'm home. Okay, awesome. Well, it's, uh, it's, I think what CCAR does is fantastic. Can you share us a little bit information about your uh, vision and mission? Yeah, as a nonprofit, our vision is one of a workplace where we have fully trained automotive professionals focusing on their craft, enhancing their overall business, and basically living their life in a safe, clean, and green uh, way. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, and and what, what, what are the missions of the organization? Uh, mission of CCAR is to provide consistent, compliant safety, pollution prevention, and hazmat training, as well as education and environmental best practices to the global automotive industry. So you know, you serve the collision repair industry, you serve uh, the automotive service industry, you know, what, who, who, are your, who are your main customers? Yeah, we break down our clients into four uh, categories. We do a lot of work with collision repair, have been from the very beginning. Uh, do a lot of work with mechanical repair, which is really my background, and the shops that work on vehicles on the mechanical repair side. Have always worked with technical schools in a great way to teach students best practices early on in their careers. Last but not least, we do a lot of work with the OEMs and the dealer network at the OEM locations. Now, for current technical schools and colleges, you're also involved in Skills USA. Is that correct? Yeah, that's one of my passions. Um, yeah. I'm on the technical committee for the Automotive Service Technology Competition. Uh, we do uh, not only AST competition this year; we actually did uh, the maintenance and light repair as well uh, at the nationals in Louisville. I'm also involved at a couple of the state levels. I did Illinois and uh, Missouri this year. Yeah, one thing at Skills USA, we certainly practice uh, safety on a, on a daily basis yes. and make sure that all the contestants are safe and they've got their, their gloves on and their respirators and their safety glasses. So uh, certainly something that we uh, like to preach as well at Definitely. Skills USA on the collision side. So, um, you know, why, you know, I mentioned kind of in, in the introduction, you know, working with our hands and our, our eyes are really, you know, some of our tools that we really need, some of our best assets. Um, so why is training important in that area to make sure that we're protecting ourselves? Well, now more than ever, we have a... Um, a shortage of technicians in the industry. So we've got to take care of the people we have today. We don't have a roster of people waiting to walk in the door and take the place of a technician who hurts themselves or hurts somebody else on the job. So we are focusing on teaching best practices to the staff, to the management, to learn how to prevent those accidents from happening in the first place. Not to mention the direct or indirect costs that happen if somebody gets hurt on the job, they're off the job, they're not making a wage, um, you know, the insurance rates go up, the, you know, OSHA gets involved, it, it gets expensive. Yeah, so, you know, Grant, you know, it, you know, if a painter's out of shop for a couple of days or a week or a month or a, a heavy duty structural technician, uh, that cer certainly can hurt the bottom line as well as that technician's paycheck as well. Exactly. Hurts, hurts the shop owner, hurts the management, hurts that technician. I mean, physically, obviously, hurts them if they're off the job with an injury, but they're not making the wage they would make if they were on the job. And, and it's also the law, right? I mean, you need, you need safety and, and hazardous material training, is that correct? Yeah. If you're following the OSHA requirements, OSHA says you should train your shop staff on safety best practices before they start working on the shop floor and then annually thereafter. Okay. And uh, the DOT also requires training, is that correct? Yeah, DOT is another area that we do a lot of training in, Department of Transportation. Uh, they oversee, in our area, anything that involves a hazardous material. There are a bunch of hazardous materials in vehicles these days. You may not realize 
um, seat belt pretensioners, lithium batteries. The big one we work with these days is airbag modules. Airbag modules are considered a hazardous material. Sure. So if you're handling these materials, whether you're a shipper receiver, a technician, a manager, or a parts driver, mm -hmm. uh, DOT wants you to train on hazardous material best practices within 90 days of starting on the job and then every three years thereafter. Yeah, between deployed airbags that we have to replace, the seatbelt pretensions you mentioned, and certainly like the Takata airbags, oh, the recalls huge. on those, um, it's important that we're 50, working. 50 million Takata airbag recalls uh, and vehicles uh, involved in that recall right now. And then obviously the hazardous materials we're dealing with, adhesives, we're dealing with you know paint materials, cleaners, oh, yes. uh, so it's important that we're protecting ourselves with that, all yes. that as well. Uh, so tell me a little bit more about, uh, you know, from a, from, a, from a DOT standpoint, are there case studies out there where, um, you know, there's been fines levied against organizations? There have been, and it, and it goes across industries, but there was uh, one fairly significant MSO uh, that got hit uh, a while back with a very, fairly significant fine of over a million dollars, okay. and training was part of the reason why they were fined uh, with the handling of the hazmat that, that they got involved with. So is that one of the first things that the DOT or OSHA looks for, is that safety training? Great question. So if DOT or OSHA gets involved in an incident, they're going to walk in. The first thing they're going to say is, is everybody okay? Mm -hmm. They are really concerned about the well-being of the staff. And once that's been cleared up, the next question they're going to say is, show me your training records. Show me you've trained your staff on best practices uh, within the requirements of both DOT and OSHA. Okay. Um, and, and you mentioned the OSHA. What, what are the OSHA requirements as far as when they, when they need to be trained? OSHA wants you to train your shop staff on best practices before they start working on the shop floor okay. and then annually thereafter. Annually thereafter. What, okay. Every fantastic. year. Fantastic. And what about OSHA? There's some OSHA case studies out there as well, I would assume, for uh, some fines that are levying. What's, kind of, what's, what's been happening on the OSHA front? Yeah, there's, there's lots that goes on with OSHA. Um, we'll talk a bit, a bit about our website, I know, in a, in a bit here. But um, there's been several fines issued to manufacturers, to uh, shop owners, for um, having incidents at their shop, whether it's a fatality or an injury. Um, the increases in fines from OSHA started back in January of this year. The okay. standard violation used to be around $7,000. Now it's over $13,000 per violation. Um, and if it's a repeat violation, if you're an MSO and one location has a violation and a second location has a violation, you're now a repeat offender and those okay. fines can run upwards of $130,000 per violation. So it's not specific to that building, it's, it could be the entire organization. Right. You can be a repeat violator if you simply have more than one location and have incidents across separate locations. Okay. Yeah, it's just, I think you know, the, the laws aside, I still think the, the most important part, I, I believe from a closure repair facility standpoint, is really making sure that your employees are safe, that they're productive, that they're on the floor. Um, again, that's that's the livelihood of the shop, that's the livelihood of the technician, and uh, and, and front office personnel as well. You don't want uh, someone from the front office walking back in the shop and potentially getting something in their eye or Absolutely. slipping and falling. Yeah, our approach is train your entire, your entire shop staff, whether they're front office, whether they're on the shop floor, whether they're management, they should all know safety best practices. All right, Charlie, so none of us want that knock on the door with OSHA there. How does that typically happen? What, what happens? How do, what, what makes OSHA show up at your shop? Well, heaven forbid there's a fatality in your shop that's going to bring an OSHA inspector in, but that doesn't happen all that frequently, thank goodness. Uh, in my experience, the most common reason why OSHA is going to be in your shop is going to be due to an employee complaint. Your employee, your existing employee, is tired of working in a condition where he or she feels they're unsafe, or it's an exiting employee who wants to get back at that uh, shop owner for whatever reason. All right, now could it come from a, uh, a third party? Does it have to be an employee that it typically calls? It could happen. I mean, if it's a third party that calls OSHA and says that they have a concern about an a, uh, activity that they've seen, OSHA will take that into consideration as they do their rounds of inspections. Okay. Now, you mentioned uh, yesterday when we were talking a, a, a first-hand experience with an OSHA inspection. Can you share a little bit about that information? Yeah, I worked for an employer and we had uh, an OSHA incident where they came in and did an inspection and we had a number of violations of you know, three or four violations where we had to address. And then we had a, a conference to discuss with OSHA uh, the outcome of that. So the first thing we did was remediate all of the issues that they had found um, in the inspection. And then we came into the conference with our training records. Okay. We had used the CCAR training to uh, train our staff on safety best practices and we talked about the OSHA alliance we have um, in the automotive industry and uh, that greatly reduced the amount of the fine we eventually paid because we had taken immediate action to remediate and we showed that we had trained our staff before this incident happened. So very uh, very similar to a lot of things that the Collision Hub talks about with our documentation course. Um, documentation again is, is key here. Oh definitely. Yeah, you've got you to show the documentation, you've got to correlate the training records with the, the staff you have on site. So 
when it comes to you know the safety and hazardous material training, what what exactly does CCAR offer? So we have um, all of our courses are offered online. Okay. We have a suite of over 20 courses available, uh, 24/7, 365. Okay. Um, you can take all the 20 courses if you want, or just those courses that are specific to your job function or, or to your industry. All right, so look, we've got a lot of information here on the uh, on the website. Um, all your different links to the different uh, products that you offer. And you mentioned OEMs earlier. Um, tell us about some of the work that you do with some of the vehicle manufacturers that are out there. Yeah, going back to 2005 when we launched the Hazmat U product that was uh, developed at the request of the OEMs. So we service literally every single OEM right now with our Hazmat U product and dealer personnel. Um, one client in particular is uh, Fiat Chrysler. Um, they have a master agreement with us where we're training every single one of their dealers across the U.S. and Canada on hazmat best practices. Um, it's been in effect since 2016, and we're right now at about a 95% compliance rate uh, within the, the Chrysler network. That's, that's pretty impressive, 95% compliance. We're happy with that as, yeah. as they are as well. That's, that's fantastic. Now, another thing you have on your website is uh, you've got a blog on here, correct? Uh, Right, so we'll post uh, information on the blog relating to safety information, DOT information, um, industry information as it comes about. So we just, for example, launched uh, some new content within the Hazmat U product around lithium batteries. Okay. So we wrote a, a blog about that in a press release. Okay. And now, you know, obviously, you know, CCAR is a, is a national organization, OSHA, DOT, you know, a national organization as well. You know, what if, if I'm looking for something, what can you do to address some of the maybe local or regional or state uh, compliance issues that are out there as well. Yeah, so we are the OSHA alliance partner for the automotive industry. So we leverage that to get information on the website. So simply go into the resources page and drilling down to your specific state will give you information that's relevant to your jurisdiction. Okay, so I can go, out, go to the CCAR website, I can click on my state and pull up the, the rules and regulations for yep. uh, for that. That's fantastic. We'll updated on a regular basis. Oh, that sounds like a, an awful, uh, that's a, an awfully large task to maintain that, I would imagine. It's important to get the best information out there. That's what we're here for. Okay, cool. Well, let's log into the website here. I'll, uh, I'll click on our login button here and uh, log into my account. And uh, so one thing that we talked about, Charlie, is you've got a, you've got a free course available for everybody, is that correct? Right. As part of the OSHA Alliance Agreement, uh, we've come out with the first of several complementary courses for safety of best practices. The first one is around absorbed glass mat batteries, AGM batteries. Uh, in a nutshell, these batteries are sealed. They're not vented like the traditional flooded uh, lead acid batteries, and so you can't charge them like you would uh, the old-fashioned batteries like we had around when I was a technician back in the 80s. Okay. So if I want to access that course for free and just kind of learn a little bit more about CCAR, what they have to offer, what, what's the process for that? Real simple. Simply go to the training website, which is CCAR.training, which is the, the dedicated website for the OSHA Alliance Partners in that AGM battery course. Um, you go through the course. It's about 20 minutes in length. At the end, there's a final exam. You can pass the final exam. You'll get a certificate of completion right there on the spot. We'll also keep that in the system for you. Yeah, talk a little bit more about that. You keep it in the system, so not only can I get the training, but you also do the tracking for my shop Oh, as definitely. Well? Yeah, so you can always print the certificate when you're done with training the, the, the class. 80% okay. or better in all the courses gets you that, that attainment. And you can download them electronically. You can print them on site. We always keep them within the, our learning management system for future reference. Okay, so I can log in and look at my training records Absolutely. and pull it up. So yep. if I do have an incident and I do need to, to prove that I've gotten some education, yep. um, then it, that's Yeah, you can log awesome. in yourself and pull it down or just give us a call and we'll print them for you. Okay. Let's talk about another course. You've got your auto surface course, mm -hmm. and that's dealing with a little bit more with uh, transportation of hazardous materials and what types of information is in there. Yeah, this is the main course within Hazmat U. This is what most of our clients take to uh, ship products within the mainland USA. Um, it really covers all of the items involving what a shop may work with, the seatbelt pretensioners, the batteries, the uh, Takata airbags. And how, how does a course like this get developed? Who do you work with to develop a course like this? We have a great business partner, a shipmate. They're based out in Oregon, and they help to write our content. Uh, they update this on a regular basis. There's always uh, evolving technologies, evolving regulations. So we just, for example, put in some new content relating to lithium batteries within the course. Okay. This particular course can take over two hours to complete if you want to take the time to listen to all the narration. What's the average length of a course? Is there an average length? I mean, you've been to the uh, battery course about 20 minutes, and this one could be... Yeah, this, this is one of the longer courses because it's so content heavy. So this okay. is a little over two hours. So but most of the courses we have are around 20 minutes. Okay, so it covers how to safely handle these materials, documentation, um, is there emergency response information? Yeah, and it's really involving the, the shipping and the packaging of this to comply with Department of Transportation requirements. Okay, and you talk about you know uh, safety data sheets in one of the courses, I assume, kind of how to, how to read safety data sheets. That's a big one. That's one of the, uh, the top OSHA citations. So we have a specific course around hazard communication that involves uh, safety data sheets. Okay. 
What's another uh, popular course for collision repair technicians? I, I certainly recognize that you know all the courses are, are kind of uh, essential, but what's one of the more, more, more one of the more popular courses? Uh, two come to mind. There's a course around respiratory protection, which is a big one. So the uh, technicians are using the, the proper uh, PPE okay. to uh, to cover their face when they're spraying, and then there's an entire course around personal protective equipment PPE. Okay. So those are two that are very popular within the collision repair industry. So which gloves to wear using you know different uh, when you're working on different operations? Gloves, boots, eye protection coveralls, everything. And certainly the respirators is, is, a, is a huge one. Definitely. Uh, knowing which respirator to wear in which situation. Right. Yeah, so once you're logged in the system, you can see all the courses that are available. You can take all of them at the same price, or you can ch pick and choose the ones you want that are specific to your industry. And from a collision repair standpoint, obviously we get collision damaged vehicles that come in. There may be some some blood residue. We have to deal with bloodborne pathogen and right. training for that, or even cuts within the shop. You have a, you have training on that as well. There's a specific course around bloodborne pathogens, yeah, and how to handle it, and yep. who to who to call if you need to clean exactly. it up. Exactly. Uh, you mentioned earlier that training is required on a yearly basis. Right. Um, Am I going back to the same course? Is there new content? What do I need to do from a yearly training standpoint? You should take the same courses you, you took initially to cover whatever your job responsibilities are. And the, the course content gets updated as regulations change, as, as the world changes. So we'll keep that fresh, keep that new. So yeah, you'll take the same courses every single year unless you've had a change in your job responsibilities. Yeah. But every year you're adding new content based on you know, new technology that might come out. That's like, right. Like the lithium ion batteries right. that, you know, 25 years ago we didn't need to deal with, yep. but now we're dealing with a lot. That's right. And we're going to deal with them on a, on a much more regular basis probably moving in the future. Definitely. Now, if I'm interested in learning more about CCAR and taking some of these courses um, and purchasing the, the bundle, um, what's, how much, what kind of money are we talking about here from a shop investment standpoint? So we're a nonprofit, so it's all about reach. We try and keep our costs very reasonable. And so all of our training is offered on a per rooftop basis. Okay. So at your rooftop, at your location, I don't care if you've got 10 people, you've got 100 people, the price is the same. The bundle for the safety course is $299 for a 12-month subscription. Okay. You can train your entire staff for that $299 for the year. The Hazmat U is also $299 for a rooftop subscription. Okay, so for around 600 bucks, I can train my entire staff, yep. my entire shop, my front office personnel, my, my painter, my structural technician, and get everybody taken care of That's on right. a yearly basis. Yep. If I look at the loss of a painter for a couple of hours if they have to run to the hospital, or a structural technician, they're going to be gone for a day or two, um, because they weren't properly trained on safety and they injured themselves, that lost productivity is going to be uh, much more than that $600 investment. Definitely. Nobody has a roster of technicians waiting to step in if that person hurts themselves or hurts somebody else. Yeah. So if they learn safety best practices, they stay on the job, they stay productive, everybody wins. And then if this you know, ends, ends up having you know, OSHA or DOT or somebody coming in, now my those fines could increase and I might be looking at a, a much more costly investment for not Right. Technician. You could be looking at it, the incident cost, you're looking at the cost of fines from OSHA or DOT, and you're looking at probably an increase in your insurance premiums because they're going to find out that you've had a, you've had a claim. And we were talking uh, earlier uh, yesterday um, about uh, an incident that you had where you, you were, there, was, there was some, uh, some fines levied in an organization you were familiar with and because you were able to prove that you had some education training, those fines were reduced and you said your insurance also went down? Yeah, I worked for a large franchisor that also had a number of company stores. We had about 100 locations at one time and one of my responsibilities was to work to keep all of the shop staff in compliance with the regulations. So I started researching how to do that and found the CCAR training as a way to teach our shop staff uh, safety best okay. practices. So we put the training in place and a couple of things happened. Um, first of all, we had a reduction in incidents. So okay. the folks, after they learned safety best practices, sure enough, were not hurting themselves and yeah. were not hurting others. But one of the outcomes I didn't expect was our insurance rates went down because we did not have those insurance claims, did not have those workman comp issues happening, the, the rates that we were paying in a, as an insurer to the insurer went down significantly. Okay, so that $600 investment certainly paid for itself no doubt. for that organization. No doubt. That's wonderful. Well, Charlie, we certainly appreciate what you do, and we at Collision Hub think it's important that our technicians and our front office personnel are, are, are safe. And that's why we're excited to announce that Collision Hub and CCAR have partnered together mm -hmm. to make this training readily available to you um, for just that $600 a year. So. If I want to sign up for this new program, this new relationship that, uh, that Collision Hub and CCAR have, Charlie, where can I go? Uh, just go to the dedicated website. It's collisionhub.hazmatu.org or give us a call at our, at our office, 888-476-5465. And mention that you're uh, interested, you're, you're a Collision Hub customer and you want to get some training and make sure that your staff is safe. Yes, we'll get you signed up on the spot.
Well, that's wonderful, Charlie. I really appreciate your time today. And uh, visit that website, check it out. Uh, make sure that your staff is working safely. Make sure that you as technicians are working safely. Um, increase that productivity. Make sure that you're able to uh, stay on the shop floor, be productive, and uh, make sure that uh, we don't have people some, you know, coming knocking on our doors uh, wanting to uh, learn about our, our safety training. Make sure that we've got that documentation and that we're protecting ourselves. So appreciate your time today, Charlie. Thank you, Jason. Thank you.